मैं डॉक्टर रमानाथ पांडे से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे उपकुलपति महोदय का स्वागत पुष्पगुच्छ से करें मैं प्रबंधन संकाय के डीन प्रोफेसर जाडेजा से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे प्रबंधन संकाय के भूतपूर्व अध्यक्ष प्रोफेसर जीसी माहेश्वरी का स्वागत पुष्पगुच्छ से करें मैं डॉक्टर रमानाथ पांडे से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे श्रीमती ऋतु कोहली एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर अग्रसेन कॉलेज दिल्ली का स्वागत पुष्पगुच्छ से करें मैं फैकल्टी ऑफ जर्नलिज्म की डीन प्रोफेसर नीति चोपड़ा से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि प्रोफेसर अमित ढोलकिया का स्वागत पुष्पगुच्छ से करें थैंक यू मैडम इस संगोष्ठी एवं कार्यशाला के निदेशक डॉक्टर रमानाथ पांडे से मैं अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे स्वागत वक्तव्य प्रस्तुत करें ओम रामाय नम जय तु संस्कृत जय तु भारत नमस्ते हिज एक्सीलेंसी श्री ओम प्रकाश कोहली ऑनरेबल गवर्नर ऑफ गुजरात स्टेट ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर योगेश सिंह महामहोपाध्याय स्वामी डॉक्टर पवित्रानंद ब्रह्मचारी श्री राजवीर शर्मा जी प्रोफेसर माहेश्वरी जी एंड प्रेजेंट अदर डिग्नेटरीज इन ऑडियंस फ्रेंड्स एंड कलीग्स आई एक्सटेंड द हार्ट फेल्ट वेलकम टू दिस सेमिनार ऑन प्रैक्टिसिंग इंटीग्रल ह्यूमनिज ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ द कॉर्डिनेटर कमिटी ऑफ द सेमिनार सेमिनार इट गिव्स मी ग्रेट प्लेजर टू वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन शेयरिंग एक्सपीरियंसेस इन पर्टिकुलर आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम डिस्टिंग गेस्ट फ्रॉम नेशन हुज पार्टिसिपेशन इन द वर्कशॉप डेमोस्ट्रेट ए लॉन्ग स्टैंडिंग इंटरेस्ट and environment to corp to cooperate in organizing the this important event i am pleased to inform you that the ms university continues to play an important role in uncovering the ancient indian thought and its application to solve problems uh, faced by contemporary society the two day national seminar on practicing integral humanism has been organized to honor the life of our beloved leader pandit din dayal upadhyay ji the thought of organizing the seminar was mooted by professor g c maheshwari on 4th june 2012 at the time of inauguration of this very hall the main purpose of this event is to inspire the faculty and students at msu to follow in the footsteps of an integral humanism icon and learn the principles of holistic humanism and technology to practice um, there is in everyday life for personal well-being and society's well-being our current education system predominantly uh, promotes a materialistic and mechanical way of life bringing consciousness as the foundation of modern education creates a holistic system of education developing an educational model model by integrating the ancient wisdom science and practicing of integral humanism will transform and bring balance to the existing education this paradigm shift impact quality of all life on the planet our current education is the means to a prosperous materialistic lifestyle the whole focus is on external achievement which do not bring any inner happiness this limited approach is also the source of most of the problem in the society thus the revised purpose of education must include in addition to imparting the uh, skills to earn a livelihood also provide knowledge to advance inner awareness leading to human happiness learning with awareness is called conscious education it provides the ability to earn a living and also living a wholesome life the integral humanism of pandit dinayal upadhyay thought if taken into consideration 
in our practical life can help in the realization of the goal of man making education. This is the most effective and powerful way to create a prosperous, peaceful, and delighted society. This purpose of education should be adopted as a policy statement at the highest level in the education system hierarchy. The early years of, uh, the early years of child development are the most crucial in creating a dynamic personality. This is the age when human subconscious is programmed based on the input from uh, formal and informal learning environments. A new science of life program needs to be incorporated at every level from K-12 grade. The examples of the topics covered in this program include cleanliness, organic farming, laws of nature, such as law of cause and effect, law of entropy, law of attraction, gravity, the butter cycle, role of money in personal well-being, importance of five elements in creation, yoga exercises, meditation, etc. The, uh, the complexity of the details covered and periodic reinforcement depend upon the level of learning. The science of life program must be complemented by involving the students in various selfless service projects. Every student spends a certain number of hours every week in one or more of these projects. Examples of potential projects include classroom cleaning, school cleaning, village city cleaning, team building exercises, growing organic vegetables, helping the elderly and sick, etc. If we start with this approach now involving first graders, it will take a complete generation to transform to a peaceful and prosperous society. The proper use of a host of multimedia learning technology and accelerate the process of self-transformation leading to society's transformation. In the last session of this seminar on 23rd November, we have organized a panel discussion which will discuss importance of practicing integral humanism. What are the challenges of introducing integral humanism in today's environment for young kids, students, teachers, and other staff members? Parents and grandparents must be educated along with the children by conducting public awareness workshops on integral humanism. The panel will summarize the key areas covered in the seminar and their relevance in raising the um, quality of life of the society in general and a specific recommendation for the policymakers to apply the paradigm of integral humanism in the revised education model. It will explore ways to bring awareness of integral humanism practices to all. Thank you. मैं महामहोपाध्याय डॉक्टर पवित्रानंद ब्रह्मचारी जी से अनुरोध करती हूँ कि वे बीज वक्तव्य प्रस्तुत करें। ओम ब्रह्मानंदम् परम सुखदम् केवलम् ज्ञानमूर्तम् द्वन्द्वातीतम् गगनसद्रिशम् तत्त्वमस्यादिलक्ष्यम् एकम् नित्यम् विमलम् चलम् Sarvadhi shakshi bhutam bhavatitam trigunarahitam sadhgurum tangnamami Vishwam darpana drishyaman nagari tulyam nijantar gatam pashyanatmani mayaya vahirod bhutam yathanidraya yah shakshat kurute pravodh samay swatmanami vadvayam तस्मै श्री गुरुमूर्ते नमः इदम् श्री लक्ष्मीना हूँ। Respected His Excellency, Honourable Governor of Gujarat State, Sri Om Prakash Kohli Ji, Honourable Vice Chancellor, Professor Yogesh Singh Ji, Officiating Register, Professor Amit Tholkia, Dr. Ramanath Pandey. Seminar Director, Professor Rajvir Sharma, Vice President of Indian Institute of Public Administration, Professor Jishi Maheshwari, Professor J.D. Jadeja, Dean Faculty of Management Studies, other esteemed faculty members, distinguished guests and students. 
I feel honored and privileged to address this national seminar on practicing integral humanism, which aims to discuss the principles of holistic humanism and techniques to practice them every day for personal well-being and society's well-being. The two days seminar will cover various topics related to integral humanism, like fractured and fragmented humanism and its consequences, process of cultivating integral humanism, integral humanism to solve contemporary problems, application in management, practicing integral humanism on the basis of Upanishadic thoughts, etc., will be discussed by professors and experts. Dialogues of civilizations are for the sustenance of the eternal and perennial process of evolution and continuity of the cultural streams. This is first time in the human history that all these self-organizing processes are being interfered with at a global scale, unless corrected or restored. This not only poses a great threat to the human civilization, but also the totality of the inseparable interconnectedness of all natural phenomena that are being fragmented. A fundamental basis for a dialogue of civilization can only be the human future, not the future of the marketplace. Thus, human-centric development is the realization by all humans of their highest potential, material, mental, supramental, and spiritual within ecological constraints. New science also posits a unified worldview based on the principles of quantum interconnectedness and an all-purposive energy field called quantum vacuum or zero-point energy that exists in empty field. This oneness and interconnectedness of all phenomena powers a holistic picture of the universe. There is an urgent need to understand the linkages and articulate the roots of the problems and enlarge the orbit of human and global consciousness to a point from where a new social architecture becomes visible and reverses the paralysis which is now setting into the human system. Therefore, a transition for the human-centric process of development should be based on necessary consumption or the satisfaction of the minimum basic needs for all rather than production at any cost irrespective of the concerns for justice, ecology, and reason. As only an integral human being can search and realize the path of the inseparable cosmic reality, purpose of life, and true human destiny. The line moves from a human being to the family, to the community, to the nation, to the humanity. All the while, we should not lose sight of our ultimate goal, that is, it is a human-centric society. We have to realize the infinite potential of the human mind, the billions of years of continuity and cosmic interconnectivity becomes a crucible for the evolution of human consciousness. We are mindlessly disturbing and disrupting the interconnectedness beyond self-correcting, self-generating limits of the natural processes. Attempts were made during the early part of the 20th century to start a movement of humanism as a life stance including some great names of physical, biological, and social sciences. But movement did not take off at psychosocial level. To define the new parameters of human-centric development, it would be necessary to place the new humanism between ecological concerns and spiritual realization and an integral humanism where ecology will provide the physical and resources constraints while spiritual growth and consciousness will curb the expansion of unsustainable consumerist growth. Pandit Deen Dayal Upadhyay was a philosopher, economist, social reformer, and political thinker. 
His philosophy of practicing integral humanism was based on traditions of Advaita Vedanta, that is, non-dualism followed by Jagat Guru Adi Shankaracharya. The non-dualism presents the unifying principle of every phenomena of the universe of which humankind is a cons constituent. In 1965, Pandit Din Dayalji spelled out his views on integral humanism in his own words. Quote, both the systems, capitalists and communists, have failed to take account of the integral man, his true and complete personality and his aspirations. One considers him a mere selfish being lingering after money, having one law, the law of fire's competition, in essence, the law of jungle, whereas other has viewed him as a feeble, lifeless cog in the whole scheme of things, regulated by rigid rules and incapable of any good unless directed. The centralization of power, economic and political, implied in both, therefore, results in dehumanization of, uh, dehumanization, uh, humanization of man. Man, the highest creation of God, has his own identity. We must reestablish him in his rightful position, bring him the realization of his greatness, recount his abilities, and encourage him to the extent for attaining divine heights of his latent personality. We must also consider whether we can do something to lift the world out of its present confused and bewildered state. Having duly considered different theories, both Bharatiya and foreign, and their strong and weak points, it can be seen that the philosophy of integral humanism shows the only way that will lead man further in his deliberations. Integral humanism is not merely a theoretical discussion, but directly relates to the way and outlook on life and must stand practical test. We have vowed to make our nation powerful, wealthy, and happy, so we have to do national reconstruction on the basis of this philosophy. We have to make Bharat greater and better than its pristine self and ensure that every man born here will not only develop himself well, but also realize his soul as one with all humanity and the universe and get elevated from Nar, that is man, to Narayan, that is godness. While keeping in mind all these things, if we march ahead, we will be able to place before the world ideals like nationalism, democracy, equality, and world amity in a balanced and integrated form, along with permanent values in Bharatiya culture. The contradictions at present will vanish, and they will become mutually complementary. And humankind will achieve his goal in life by retrieving his lost image. This is a brief summary of the concepts of Pandit Deal Divalji. Now I will come to the topic given to me, that's integral humanism and quantum science. Uh, last year, I had a visit to the Brookhaven National Laboratory in New York, uh, which has particle accelerator and working on Higgs boson with the CERN. Uh, this institute has seven Nobel laureates to their credit. There, I had a lecture on physics and consciousness.